Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Voices of the Elephant. My name's Cal Evans, and I'm your co-host. And now 90% of the people watching this are totally confused. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Welcome to the Acquia podcast. <laughs> I'm Jam. This is my guest, Cal Evans. There you go. Much better. <laughs> we had this fun idea. We both do podcasts. They're both involved in PHP, open source, Drupal, mm -hmm. um, those spaces. And we've been talking a lot virtually, exchanging tweets, emails, and so on. And we wanted to meet in person anyway. DrupalCon Amsterdam was a good opportunity. Excellent. And so Cal said to me a couple weeks ago, I want to interview you. And I said, hey, whoa, I want to interview you. Let's sit down and do this together. So let's kick it off. Um, how did you discover open source? Very interesting story. At least I find it interesting. Um, I was, uh, very early on, I was setting up websites mainly for my parents' company. They sold music to churches. And at one point, I had two Microsoft Windows servers on the internet. Um, we had streaming audio. We had a catalog of about 10,000 products. And uh, my wife, the lovely and talented Kathy, um, had designed it all. I had built the entire back end in ASP Classic. Everybody was happy. And along comes the next version of Windows and SQL Server, and it was going to cost me $15,000 in licensing fees. No new hardware or anything, just licensing fees to upgrade. And I said, I just don't have that kind of money. And so uh, I went to my dad. I wasn't working for them, but I was working with them at the time. I worked to my dad, and I said, look, um, for $4,500, we can get a um, server, put it out there, and there's this operating system called Linux, and there's this new language called PHP, and I think I can figure out how to rewrite it. Six months later, we had totally ditched the Microsoft um, servers. Uh, I had the entire site back up and running on PHP, and honestly, I've never looked back. And since then, I have been involved in a bunch of other projects. I'm a big supporter of WordPress. I know this is uh, Drupal, but I'm a big supporter of WordPress. I've got WordPress on five or six of my sites. My wife is a, um, when given the choice, she deploys Drupal. So it's always a constant battle with us when we're getting ready to deploy something. It's, well, what do you want to do? Well, are you going to do the work or am I going to do the work? <laughs> so and if she's doing the work, it's Drupal. Well, it's all PHP. It's all open source. Yeah. We're not enemies. Oh, no. No. Um, and actually, I'm really excited about the convergence going on in the in the PHP world now. I think that a year from now, mid-2015 onwards, it's going to be a lot harder to say what is Drupal, what is not Drupal, what, you know, these, yeah. these incredible, the composer and the PSR standards and and when do I not write a module anymore, and when do I just write a PHP library? I think these are all questions that we're going to be dealing with. Yes, I totally agree. So when was that that you um, were given the permission to spend money to have to redo all that work to, to, to have your site working? I was still in Virginia Beach, so that had to be 96 when I started. Um, it was mid-96, so um, early 97 was when I actually deployed for the very first time. That's very early PHP. Yeah, um, I think it was PHP version 3.5 beta was the first version I started working with. So, ah. yeah, I, I was a bleeding edge at that point. And, but I was young enough so that I was you know, stupid enough to do stuff like that. Okay, and what made you stick with PHP? I keep telling people that I want to learn Ruby and I want to learn Node because and Python because I have great respect for these languages and these tools. And I keep telling people, as soon as I come across a problem I can't solve in PHP, I'm going to learn one of those. I'm just lucky that the problems that I am coming across, I can solve very easily in PHP. And I was like, well, no, I don't really need these right now. So if, one of the, if, if a new problem comes along, if I've got to write a daemon or something, no, I'm not going to write that in PHP. I'll move to Python or something, you know. But um, right now, I, you know, PHP just does everything that I needed to do. 
but I wasn't active in the community for a long time. I mean, I told you, I started um, 96, but uh, it was literally 2004, 2005, before I realized that I wasn't the only person on the planet coding in PHP. Um, I, I, I was working, uh, I was running a development team in San Jose, and um, I, yeah, I had three or four PHP developers with me, and one of my guys brought in an ad, and he says, I want you to buy us this magazine called PHP Architect. I had no idea it was out there. I went on to run PHP Architect for three years along with a great team, um, uh, Marco Tabini, who founded it, and Keith Casey and I um, all, all ran it. But I, I just did not know. And it was at that point I was like, well, there's, there's other people out there actually using PHP. This is kind of awesome. And I went on to eventually uh, work for Zend and become their community guy because we didn't have developer advocate titles at that point. It was, you're the guy that talks to the community, you know, and I was way over here. You know, I was a dotted line to marketing. <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's a, such an interesting progression. You, you, um, I run into people who download Drupal and try it and hate it because it doesn't do anything when you turn it on, so what is this? Um, and they're also often the people who don't realize that this is connected to this amazing uh, uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. So how did you discover Drupal? Did you, did you marry into Drupal? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Uh, the lovely and talented Kathy and I have been married for 31 years now, and um, they, we predate pretty much the internet, so, but, uh, it, my, uh, she was working at a development shop that was big into Drupal there in Nashville, and she brought it home, and um, I think her words were, you know PHP, help me make this work. So, you know, we, uh, we have a development server there at the house, which I pretend to still code on, and um, she installed, or she said, go download it and install it, and I, I did, and she says, here's what it's not doing. And so I did what I always do, you know, hack the core. I didn't know any better. You know? <laughs> These days, I know better. But we, we, we solved the problem. But it was then that I uh, really got involved in it. Matter of fact, um, in Nashville, we had a Drupal camp in 2010. And I was actually part of the organi organizing team. I was the, the, the grunt laborer, the guy that was lifting the boxes and everything. But I was part of the team that um, helped put that on. And that was my first camp experience also. Um, and it was a, a fascinating time. So tell me about your day job, which has an awful lot to do with, with Drupal. Yes, um, my day job is um, I am the developer advocate for Pantheon. Now, I grew up in a conservative Christian evangelical family. Evangelist has a very specific connotation and not always a great one. So I don't call myself an evangelist, but also in the, um, in the tech community, um, I, I think the word advocate fits better in the role that I play because an evangelist goes out and tells you about the product. And if you're in marketing, you're probably an evangelist. I'm not in marketing anymore. Um, the, the, the wonderful people at Pantheon moved me over to the, um, the, the customer success team. And so now my job is to go out and, yes, I tell developers about Pantheon, but I also listen to them and go back to the company and say, this is what I'm hearing. And if what I'm hearing doesn't jibe with what they're planning, then they reevaluate. They say, you know, are we really on the right track? It, it's a wonderful feedback loop, and, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, I am um, talking with the Acquia support team as well. What I love is this open source idea of how we help and support people, because I know just as much, I mean, obviously, if somebody calls you with a problem, you're going to listen to what their problem is. Mm -hmm. But if you've got the time and everybody's interested, uh, the client advisors at Aqua will say, so this was your problem. This is how we discovered it. This is how we fix it. Uh, this is how you can uh, detect it the next time the diagnosis are like this. This is how you prevent it the next time. And it's very much like, here's how to do Drupal better. It's not just, here's a ticket that's been solved. Yes. Well, and I love excellent. it. Yeah, but it's real. It, this is... And it's open source people helping other people with open source, right? I love, yeah. I love that we can maintain our roots and still be uh, and still run successful companies. Yeah, and that's kind of a that's kind of a privilege for us in in the open source world. It really is um, because I've worked in closed source, and um, you don't have this kind of freedom. And with one exception, you don't have this kind of community. Um, I grew up, I, I, I say I grew up. I, I cut my teeth in um, programming for on um, Fox Pro. And that was my first, oh yeah, way back in the day. Um, I actually heard Dr. Dave give a keynote at a Fox Pro developer con. Um, but 
I, uh, that was my first exposure to programming and my first exposure to a community. And it set the standards by which I've evaluated every other developer community I've been a part of. No other community I've been a part of has come close to that except for the PHP community. Because in Fox Pro, there was an awful lot of, we just got to figure this out ourselves because nobody's going to help us. And so we all dug in and we helped each other. And we gave talks and we, I, I wrote magazine articles um, back then. That was back when, you know, Dead Tree was actually a, a way of distributing information. Yep. And uh, I, I, I wrote for um, com, uh, magazines and um, had, had a wonderful time with that community. And then I hit the, um, uh, the, the Java community and several others. And I've, I've worked in several other languages. Um, and, and the ASP community. The ASP community, yeah, I, yeah, I've got this problem. And somebody would say, yes, I, I understand. I know how to solve that. I'm going to need your credit card, please. You know? <laughs> this was just not what I was expecting mm. because so many years of Fox Pro. And then I get to PHP, and once I discovered that there are people out there doing it, I'm like, this is what I'm used to. Because I, I tell everybody, PHP has three things going for it. It is a great language, only language designed for the web. It has an awesome set of documentation maintained by some great people, and it has one of the most vibrant and exciting communities out there. And that is, I think, what makes the difference and what has kicked it up to. Um, the last statistic I saw was it's running on 80% of the servers on, uh, in, on the web, which means Drupal is immediately available to 80% of the servers on the web. Yeah. Your side gig ties into all of this. I like to refer to it as my side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Your side hustle, which is called Nomad PHP, mm -hmm. is, if I understand it correctly, a sort of a virtual users group? It is a virtual user group. And I was having this discussion with um, somebody else recently, and um, th this person expressed to me, says, I don't particularly care for the fact that you market Nomad PHP as a user group. And I told this person, I said, you've never attended a meeting because I don't market it as a user group. It is a user group. Now, um, you do pay to attend. And um, we have subscribers, and um, we pay our speakers. Because you know, if you're speaking at a conference, you get travel. And these are the same people you see speaking at PHP conferences. And so I, I can't pay their travel, so I, I, I pay them. But... You, and and I, I, uh, we sell a, um, a, a live ticket and a, a, a video-only ticket, but we encourage people to attend live because you get more out of it. Because not only do you have, at that point, do you have the what's going on on the screen, you're hearing the person talk, you're seeing the um, slides, you can ask questions, but we've got an IRC channel. And the IRC channel is like all the guys sitting in the back, guys and girls, because we have girls attend, all the guys and girls sitting in the back just, you know, kibitzing, you know, what's going on or making bad jokes and all this. Sure, so it's like, a, it's like a real stand-up. Exactly, you know. <laughs> it, it's like being at a real conference. We have that hallway track, and that is where all the really interesting conversations take place. Yeah, I, granted, um, a, a lot of times the, the conversations there are in the standard peanut gallery stuff. Hey, what you doing? You know, haven't seen you since the last time we were all here in the group. But um, once they get the, the um, talk gets going, you know, you, you get good questions. You get people that are supporting each other. And I can always tell when everybody's um, really, really, we got a really good speaker because the IRC channel will go dead. Mm. Until they finish, and then all of a sudden explodes with questions, and um, you know it's just it, it is a user group for those that don't have a user group. Um, I get up there, the the my introduction every time I say, Nomad PHP is not designed to replace your local user group. If you've got one, go attend. If you don't know if you got one, uh, point a browser at php.ug, and it'll show you on the map. This one's the closest one to you. And if there's not one close to you, start one. And I know of at least two people that have said, yeah, okay, let's do that. Well, mm. Let's start one. Um, because there's no replacement for that personal interaction. But a lot of people can't get to conferences or just don't have a local user group and don't have the time to, support, um, to start one and um, run it. And that's what Nomad's for. Also, and I think having a, a, a multi, uh, multi-modality live interaction really supports the human element, which is, back to what we were saying before, uh, you know, makes communities, makes the open source really happen, the face-to-face -face interaction. If you've met people a few times, mm -hmm. and then you're also interacting virtually, you have a real, you have a real uh, relationship with those people, yeah. right? And allowing, allowing 
back channel at the same time must must make it a richer experience. Oh, and it, we we all have fun um, because if you've been to more than one or two of them, then you know everybody that's in there or most of the people that's in there because we have a lot of regulars. But what to me the most fun is to go to a conference and see these people meet each other face to face for the first time, and we'll sit down and we'll have a much more richer conversation because we've already gotten all, all the preliminaries out of the way. We can sit down as friends and start really talking about the technology. Right? Don't you love those moments at open source uh, conferences where two people are are talking and then wait? Your red balloon 99? Yep. No way. <laughs> Let's go. And these people have been working together for three or four years, and and you know they 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 live in the issue queues together. They write patches, but they have no idea. Yep. Right. Who they are in the real world, and then all of a sudden, you know, your project grows and and blossoms. And I, I've I've witnessed that happen, and um, it, it's just it, it's phenomenal. And that is, um, I mean, I, I have one major passion in my life, and that's to help developers. And I mean, the last 10 years of my career, in one way or the other, it's been uh, my privilege to be paid to go out and find ways to help developers. Nomad um, PHP, uh, we just started Nomad JavaScript, and a project that I've been running for three or four years, um, Day Camp for Developers, which is a four or five hour mini conference online. Those are all designed to help developers. And yes, you you pay to attend all of those, but yes, I also give away an, an, an inordinate amount of tickets to all of those because you know, it, my passion is not making money. My wife's passion is paying the bills. My passion is helping developers. She gets mad at me because she says, did you really mean to give all these tickets away? It's like, well, yeah, they needed to hear this, you know? She, she understands, but I can't say that she's always happy with me. <laughs> and so I'm... I'm um, glad that Nomad has caught on, and um, we're, we're now we are sustainable. The project itself, and we just opened up uh, Nomad JavaScript. I'm not actually running that. I found a member of the JavaScript community who was ex as excited about helping developers as I am with PHP. He's running that. We're just providing the infrastructure on that, and we're really excited about that. It's nice that you've got a model design now that you can you can copy. You've you've tested it out for long enough. That's cool. Nomad ASP next? Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> we might do Nomad.net, but <laughs> not ASP. 